Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install an ultra quiet battery backup Genie garage door opener. I got a really good deal on this at uh, Lowe's. Was, when we had our house built, it actually never came with any garage door opener. There's a lot of different brands out there. I went with the belt drive just because it is a quieter option. Um, I'm always out here working in the garage. I have a two car garage, um, so I went with a one and a quarter horsepower. It might be a little bit overkill, but I'd rather have the extra horsepower than, than not. So the tools you're definitely gonna need are a drill with some drill bits. You're also gonna need a socket set. This set here, the Genie actually uses standard sockets. So these are all the sockets you're gonna need to put this together. You're gonna need some wire strippers, some pliers, some wrenches, uh, a Phillips head screwdriver. You're also gonna need a stud finder to help you find the stud when mounting it to the ceiling. I'm gonna use a Dremel to cut the, the brackets that are gonna be holding up the motor to the ceiling. I'm just gonna be using a Dremel with a metal cutting tip on it. I don't have it on here yet, but I will put it on there before I get going. You can use any kind of saw that cuts metal with a metal cutting blade. You're gonna need a tape measure. You may need a scraper if you have stucco on the wall where you're gonna be mounting your transmitters. A marker to mark out your holes for your pilot holes and a level. I'll leave a link of all the tools that I use down in the description below. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and open up the box. Make sure you read your instructions. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is be working with the orange bag. So you're going to take your little pulley and then you're going to find the one piece of the rail that has a hole in it. Just slip that in there like that. Take your pin. Cotter pin and just stick it in like that. Next you're going to just take this bolt. And then you're going to use one nut to the other side. And then next you're going to take this little slide lock. And just slide it on like that. And then you're going to assemble all your rail pieces together. All right, next we're going to be installing this little pulley system on the back side of this rail. Like that. Right there. All right, next we're going to take our belt and install the belt. There's two different colors. You got silver on one side and gold on the other. So what you want to do is you, according to these instructions, you want to run the gold side through the pulley. You just want to make sure that your teeth are facing the right way. And you want to have the silver end go through the other side. So roll this. Just so make sure it doesn't twist. Okay. Get the silver end, just wrap this around the other side. Sure it's laid out so make sure it's not bound up anywhere all the way straight down okay. all right once you got your belt together you're going to install the turnbuckle it does say door and there's an arrow pointing to that side so you make sure that's facing towards the door let's get that started and turn this one on. Just a little bit. And you just want to tighten it till it's, you just want to get it to the proper tension. You don't want it to be super, super tight, but you also don't want it to be loose. So, and just make sure you're not twisting your, your band. Okay, once you get it as tight as you want it, 
make sure it moves. And then just tighten up your nuts, your lock nuts. All right, next we're gonna install the motor to the rail. It slides right down over that spline of the motor. Like that. Four screws. Just don't over tighten these, just make them snug. Next we're going to be installing the header bracket. This is going to go up here on your block wood. Um, it's going to go above it. So what you want to do is you measure your door and find the center point. So this is a 16 foot door. Center point is right here at 8 feet. So I'm just going to make a line from the center of this up to there. Alright, so the next step is you're going to want to find the uh, highest point that the garage door opens up to and you want to make your mark about two, two and a half inches higher than that mark. So what, you know, what you're checking for is to see when it touches it and it's level. This probably is easier with two people. I don't imagine. So what you want to do is find it level. It's actually pretty level right there. I'm just going to make a mark at the bottom of this level. So then from that mark, you're just going to go to your center line, two inch, two and a half inches up. So about right there. We're going to mount the header bracket. So you just want to get that lined up on your line. You need to drill some pilot holes. All right, so I ended up splitting the wood. So I ended up drawing some holes in the top and bottom instead. Doesn't really matter how you do it. Just make sure you drill some holes in your wood so you don't split it. All right, next I'll be connecting the rail to the header bracket. And then you're just using a pen for this one. Bucket's not high enough. So I ended up just moving my table over just to kind of held it a little bit, a little bit closer. Cause you wanted to slide in like that. Just like that and put your little pin in. All right, so the next step is to mount the motor to the ceiling. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be drilling these into the studs. So I'm gonna be using a stud finder. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of see where the motor lands on the roof. Keep it lined up. Right around there. All right, the next thing you want to think about is how you're going to hang your um, motor. So I got up here, I tried a couple different things. Um, there wasn't any support here in the middle where it was actually supposed to um, mount up. So I ended up putting some boards um, up in the attic and screwed them in. And then you're just going to lift the motor up and you're going to stick the mounts up to here, so you're going to probably have to cut them a little bit shorter.
And there you go. Alright, so next we're going to be connecting the actual garage door opener to the garage door. Um, and there's just a couple different brackets we have to install, and these will install right directly onto the door. There will also be a, an L-shaped bracket or something similar to this. This will connect to the emergency release and it's going to connect to the door. So you're going to mount it right here on the top of the garage door itself. Some garage doors actually have holes notched out in them, so it makes it a little bit easier. So I'm just going to put it right there where those line up. These are self-tapping screws. So these will just drill straight into your metal. If you have wood. Alright, next we're going to install the pins. The L-shaped bracket. So the hook actually goes right here. Oh, drop that one. Okay. Take your pen up here. And then you want to get this to where this will be, where your holes can be the farthest apart. So I'm going to put one in this hole and that hole. So the instructions say to measure it out, it's roughly around 16 inches off the door or 30 degree angle. I'm going to tighten these up here in just a second. Tight. All right, next we're going to install the emergency release handle. Right about the height. You want to make sure you can still reach it, uh, but I don't want it to be where I walk into it either, so it'll be about right there. And just tie it up however you want. Okay, and it just pops back in. So now the pull down is with the latch released. If you push it back the other way, it's latched into place and then the, the door will actually catch on the belt. All right, so next we're gonna install the receivers. These are gonna go right on the side of the garage door. The instructions say to keep them around five to six inches off the floor. Measure right there. Just make a mark with our marker. So I'm going to do these at six inches. I'm just going to scrape some of this stucco off the wall so I can get a nice flat surface. All right, so you just want to make sure that the top of this goes to the six inch line, which was right there. I'm going to screw these in. So my house luckily came pre-wired, um, so I'm gonna use the wires that are already there. Um, it does come with the wire in the kit, but since these are already run, it's gonna save me a lot of time. So there's different colors on the actual transmitters, 
and I'm going to use the color matching the color on the transmitter to match the wires. You don't have to do this. This just makes it more simpler for me to know which wire goes to what. So I have a green transmitter light and then also a red transmitter light. So I'll probably use this brown color. So next we're going to wire up the transmitter. Luckily my house came pre-wired, so I'm just going to be using this wire today. And for this one I'm going to be using the brownish color wire. This is a red light. can't see it. But I'm going to cut into this and wire up the, the wires. Use this reddish color and then the reddish white stripe. Strip these off real quick. I don't know if this will work. It works. Those off like that. The exposed wires are there. And they'll just slide right up underneath here. Sorry if the lighting is not that good, but that's what we have for now. I'm just going to add like a little hook to it so it'll hook onto those screws. Just tighten it up. Same thing with the white wire. Hook it up around. Wires out of the way. Tighten it up. And you're good to go. Just put the rest of the wire out of the way. I'm just going to circle it around here for now. So it's not dangling out in the middle of the way. And there you go. And I'll come back in here and I'll clean up all these extra wires. But that's how it should look. So next we're going to put the wires into the box. So I have these labeled. This one's for the button. This one's for the opener. Just did the green and the red wires. All right, so we're gonna put the color ones in number one and then the white line, white wires in number two. So if you have a flathead screwdriver, you can use that. I have a knife, so I'm just gonna use that today. So I'm just gonna twist these wires around each other. Maybe they go in each easier. Just push that little tab down. And then you slide it right on in like that. And then it just locks in. Get your white wires in. Yeah, like that. Since I'm up here, I'm gonna go ahead and wire up the switch for the wall. For this, I'm just gonna use probably the orange and the white. Okay. Just you got your wires in there, just give them a little pull, make sure they're tight. They don't move out, and you're good to go. So since mine was pre-wired, there is some extra wiring here. I'm just gonna tape all that up. Also, while I'm up here, I forgot to install the cover that goes over the belt. So I'm just gonna put that on real quick. It's a lot easier if you do this before you put it up, but I forgot. Okay, so I'm gonna be using orange and the orange and white for the wire. The white wire on the W. Flip this around. Like that. Let's make sure you don't damage the circuit board. Just tighten it down. Okay, just like that. I'm gonna push that in for now. And I really don't want any wires to show, so I'm gonna push this all the way in. Like that. And then I'm gonna put some anchors in the wall and mount this up. Just make a little mark. So I'm gonna drill that out. Looks 
good if we close it up. Cleaning everything up and putting the lights and all the covers and the battery on. I want to plug it up, test it, make sure everything's working right. Um, it's all connected, everything's wired up, so it should work. So we plugged it in and we do have lights on both sides. So we're gonna go ahead and test it real quick. All right, so we're gonna test it out. The light's on, so which is a good sign. Let's go ahead and push it and see what it does. So it's gonna cycle all the way back. If the door either stops from going all the way down or if it doesn't come up high enough, you're actually gonna need to set the limits. The limits will allow it to either go down to a certain point or go up to a certain point. So on the down limit, you wanna make sure the door comes all the way down and touches the floor. And on the up limit, you wanna make sure it comes all the way up to the top of your door. Just follow the steps and your instructions. Also, if your door is stopping and not going all the way through a full cycle, your force might not be set up correctly. So just make sure that you follow the steps in your manual to set the force limits. I'm going to program the down limit first. So you're just going to hold the down button until it turns blue on the inside. Everyone's a little different. And we're just going to go down a little bit. All right, and it just locked into place on the rail. So we're going to hold set program to end it. And that's going to set the down limit. So the door's already closed. Now we'll push the button just to test it, see what it looks like. Real quick. Okay, so now we're going to set the up limit. To do that, we hold the up limit until it turns blue. Okay, and then we just hold it till the door is fully open. Maybe another inch. So right there it looks perfect. So I'm gonna hold the set. Okay. And we're gonna test it one more time. Next, I'm just gonna install the covers for the lights. Uh, this didn't come with lights, so I ended up just having a couple laying around. Plug those in real quick. One on both sides. And these just clip on like this. And then just slide in them little holes right there. And then do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm just gonna tie these wires up here so they're up out of the way. Fold this up nice and neat. Doesn't have to be anything special. I'm probably gonna tuck some of it back up there. I like to leave the wire a little bit long just in case I ever need to work on it again. And that'll be right there. And this wire here is actually just your antenna. This is how the remote signals the box to turn on. So just leave this, don't, don't mess with that. Do not install or connect the battery back up until the operator is installed and limits are set. So if you have a battery, I'm gonna go ahead and install it now. You might not be able to see them, but they just slide in there and that just hangs down. There's some self-tapping screws right here. I'm gonna drill in. Okay, and then just plug your battery in. There's a little plug right here on top. Only plugs in one way and you're good to go. All right, so that's how you install a garage door opener. This project took me about three and a half, four hours to complete from start to finish. If you found the video helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching.